Well, Opera has finally made their presence felt, with the move many veteran users saw coming. By directing Yo-Yo Games to announce, GameMaker will be moving to a subscription-based service. No one has ever been excited in the history of commerce to hear those words. It usually means you have to pay for something per month when before you had this item for free or you paid a one-off cost for it. Well, before we break it down too much, here is the good news. If you have already paid for GameMaker Studio 2, then you have a perpetual license. That means you will not be moved to a subscription, you will not have to pay any more, and you are free to use it for the life of the product. So you can breathe a sigh of relief and at least know what you have, you still have, and you don't have to pay anything extra. But is it all good news? Well, before we break down the positive and negative aspects of this, let's get the facts on how the new subscription-based service will work. There are three tiers, free, indie, and enterprise. This shot is from my tier pricing, so I see it in Australian dollars. You will need to log in to see your prices as YoYo has advised they have adjusted the prices for different regions. But I believe the monthly price is $10 US and £8 in the UK. Now free gives you unlimited access to the current version, but you can't export to a standalone product. So your game has to run from within GameMaker. The Indie gives you unlimited access to the current version and the ability to export to desktop, web, mobile, and UWP, which includes the Xbox One Creators Program. Now, Enterprise includes the indie abilities as well as the console exporting. So currently, if you only have the desktop version, you now can opt into the indie subscription for free for 12 months. That means you can output your game to iOS, Android, Windows Mobile, and HTML at no charge. Of course, you still have your Windows desktop version during that time. Then, once that 12 months is up, you can start paying the indie price per month for those extra modules, or just cancel it and revert back to your old desktop version and pay nothing. Now, for each module you had, they are giving 12 month subscription for free. So I have desktop, mobile, and web. So I get 12 times three, so 36 months, free subscription to indie. So why do I have 41 months free? Well, everyone gets until 2022 for free as well. Hence the extra five months from now until the start of 2022. The other option is I can get two months per module towards the enterprise version. So that means I'd have six months in total for an enterprise license. So let's break down the pros and cons of this new direction. Firstly, the positives. Well, previous cost of all non-enterprise modules, so desktop, mobile, web, and UWP, was around three to $400 USD. As it stands now, you can use the free version for as long as you want and just subscribe for a month or two at $10 a month when you need to export your project. The value seems to be there if you wanna use GameMaker in that way. The other thing to note is the subscription model has enabled the free version to become a reality. We wouldn't have been given the free version in its current iteration if the subscription model was not in the works but the free version is quite a powerful focal point as it's the entry for all new developers. Therefore, it's an incentive for YoYo to make the product especially appealing for these new users. They are the future customers and the ones who will move onto a subscription if it impresses them enough. So unlike before where patches and stability were important and the people complaining about any issues were already customers whose money YoYo had already taken, now complaints are coming from subscribers or potential subscribers, so there should be more urgency to satisfy these voices and fix bugs in a more timely manner. You would expect more from the features going forward too, considering customers are paying the wages directly of the people integrating them. The other thing to note is the amount of time they are giving away for perpetual users is quite generous. And even though those users already own the product, they are giving away all the modules to those users for 12 months per module you own. So if you only had desktop, you now have 17 months in total to use all of the modules except the console export. So what about the negatives? Well, it's a subscription service. Like everyone I would imagine, I don't like it. Yet here I am paying Netflix, Xbox, PlayStation, Spotify, KO, my internet, my phone, 
they are all subscription based. And why are they? Well, they provide additional services over time. They are adding value to their service as time goes by. They continue to provide additional content per month and that additional content needs to be paid for. You use your mobile and internet data each month, so you need to pay for that. So what about GameMaker? Well, they have a roadmap which shows the development schedule for the product. In the past, this schedule was adhered to and changes implemented, but it was all funded by that initial purchase you make. That model is not really sustainable long-term. And Opera obviously identified that early on and have been working on this change since the acquisition. Now, why I don't like subscription models, ultimately, it's where GameMaker had to head in order to sustain its longevity. In order to continue to provide features and fix bugs, which those features can introduce, as well as continue to modify the engine to cater for the constant changes mobile platforms require. It only makes sense that GameMaker heads this way. I don't like it, but I understand it. Also, it's worth noting the current price is not what it'll stay at forever. They are more likely to come in with a super undervalued price to ease their current user base into the change. And of course, that price can only increase over time. I'm not aware of any subscription service that ever decreased their pricing model. When GameMaker Studio 3 is released, a big concern is how long will they allow existing GameMaker Studio 2 perpetual or even subscription-based users access to GMS2? The product has a dependency on the Authenticator server allowing you access. So will that service continue to operate? Will they still allow you the ability to log into the product after they stop supporting it? The good news is when GameMaker Studio 1.4 was retired, they allowed offline access, so the signs are good, but these are questions we don't have official answers to as yet, but they are questions they will need to answer in time. A major downside is if you use GameMaker to make small games, which you share among your friends, with no intention of making money from them, those users may feel this is a huge kick in the teeth. For those users, an option to export to desktop, but with the addition of a watermark or non-removable splash screen might have been the better outcome. But if your friends also use GameMaker, at least you can export your project to a zip file, then share that so they can open it and play it with their free version. Not ideal, but it remains a free alternative. Now it's worth noting that at the moment, the Steam version and its modules are not included in this. So in theory, you have time to purchase perpetual licenses through Steam. They will be converted to a subscriber system in the future though, so that avenue won't always be available. Now comparing this model to other engines, some of which are subscription based, but based on sales and some are just outright free, it seems it would be hard to compete with what they are currently offering. Only time will tell though. So depending on where you stand, this news can range from depressing to exciting. I'm personally rather excited due to how I use GameMaker, but I can totally understand some of you finding it a hard pill to swallow. It's definitely motivation to work harder on existing projects, because as the old saying goes, time is money. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you in the next one.